The Tesla turbine is the only turbine, get this, the only turbine that you don't have to worry about temperature regulation. On a standard conventional turbine, temperature regulation is critical. If you don't have your temperature regulation in check, you could go through a mil millions of dollars because if so much droplets of water form inside your turbine, it's trash. And that's expensive when you've got these big turbines operating. So you've got to imagine how critical and how worried they are about temperature regulation and how much cost that adds to a turbine system. That goes away with this. In the Tesla turbine, you can operate, you can operate with in saturated vapor region. You can operate in, in the two-phase region where you're, you have water and steam. You can operate in the saturated liquid where you have almost no steam but mostly just very hot liquid. You can operate on subcooled liquid and, and put high-pressure water into the device without damage. So it can operate in all five phases of the, of the, of the steam behavior characteristic and, and it can inject solids. You can put solids, not just droplets, but solids. And that's the same reason you can put solids is, is the same reason you can put water through it. Because nothing actually, there's nothing to contact. As you put, as you put fluid into these discs, nothing actually is to abrade the disc. It works by adhesion and viscosity. Those are the two concepts. You notice if I dribble some water on this disc, some of it ran right off, but you'll notice there's, a, there's still a cohesive drop on there, and what's it doing? It's sticking. That's adhesion. Okay, that's the two kinds. It works by, you notice how it clumped together to itself. That's viscosity, and it clings to the disc, there's still water droplets on there, clinging. That's, that's adhesion. So between those two concepts of adhesion and viscosity, you have torque transfer. It's not done through reaction on a blade. And that's why you can pump solids. Or you can pump solids or you can drive and operate with solids in the fluid. Oh, um, you've said that the salt and sea area could provide 27 times our energy needs. In that's been some estimates, yeah. Now, are there 20, other... The salt and sea is 20 sometimes potential. And, and that you could use a Tesla turbine to extract this. Are, are there any other areas in the United States that would be similar? Is the question is, is there any other areas in, in the U.S.? For the benefit of the recording, could you repeat the question? Yes, I'm, I'm doing that right now. <laughs> so, yeah, the question is, is there, other, is there other sites with so much potential as a salt and sea? Yes, they're all over the world. So, yes, everyone, every country has the potential to meet their own energy. How about the Great Salt Lake? Pardon? How about the Great Salt Lake? I, well, it probably has some. I know that the Great Salt Lake, when it was overflowing its borders, they used this technology to actually lower the lake level because it was the only pump that could stand up to the salt in the water. What about mineral buildup in it? What about mineral buildup? Well, that's a good. That's a good question. Uh, the 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 uh, tests that were the uh, the Salt Lake pumping experiment. They actually put a a grease mark pencil on, they took one of the discs and took a grease pencil and they made a mark on the disc and then they ran the thing for days and days pumping away and then when they were finished they disassembled the, the pump and there was no mineral buildup and the grease mark pencil was clearly visible just as if we had just made the mark. So that tells you something that there is absolutely no wear inside these devices. What is it? Where did this make from? What, what, this one's aluminum. They can be made out of just about any material, plastic, but in, in uh, corrosive service, you, you want to use a metal that's not going to be eaten up by, like you're pumping an acid. You want to have some stainless or inconel, some high-end material, such that if you have material left in the pump, it doesn't, because it, it will abrade the discs if you have a corrosive and you don't have the right material, it will eat away the discs. What's the role of a small hole? Oh, here's the different role. For, there's, there's actually tie pins that hold these discs together. There's two methods you can use to construct a turbine. You can either have the shaft method, what we have here, or you can use an overhung method where you just have the center open. And then when you use the overhung method, you have just a single back plate and you, you bolt all the discs to the back plate through the holes. 
That makes construction a little bit easier. But there's advantages and disadvantages of doing it each way. Are there any advantages to the small holes and the one with the shaft in the middle around the turbine? Yes, this is this is out of a pump. This is a, a, a turbine. Actually, there's too many tie pins in here. The guy that did this got kind of carried away. That's not the spec. Actually, there should only be about one third as many tie pins. Okay, they're and, tie pins. They look like holes. What they're doing is they're maintaining the spacing. There's washers between them. So you have a, a rivet, a washer, a disc, a washer. So all these discs are actually separated by washers that are on the rivet. 